Now, this is where um, I had to just say, look, you're on your own, and that's why I'm creating this video right now. So um, the, night, the 2017 exam, this was by Claire Booth Luce, and the prompt says, uh, analyze how Luce uses this introduction to prepare the audience for her, her message. Try to, and, and that's the critical message that's coming. Critical meaning she's gonna critique, she's gonna criticize her fellow journalists. Now I highlighted here for you to think about a situation that you could relate to where you had to stand up and basically critique your peers and how hard that would be. And I used Marco as an example, right? That he would probably use humor and, and get people kind of laughing with him and then he could do the tough stuff, right? Um, okay. so. In the score report, which is connected here for this passage, um, I have pulled a couple quotes for you that this passage challenged students to think about how Luce managed her difficult task of being asked to speak about problems with the press or to criticize with her audience of fellow journalists, which would be her friends and colleagues. And honestly, how many female journalists are there in 1960? So um, you hate to kind of knock them down, um, but her job was to talk to them about not giving in to sensational journalism, like popular journalism or just celebrity or just crazy stories, but to actually become real journalists that play a real part in the American uh, political and social system. So I have the anchors here for you. And then for your assignment, um, you're gonna do the same kinds of things here where you're gonna write a thesis statement, you're gonna uh, think about the exigence. You're gonna do a chunk quote for me. I don't think I put that in there. And then you're gonna, uh, what do you remember from this prompt? So in the score report, this one had a, a pretty um, low mean score. The mean score was below four, and this is back when it was out of nine. And um, what were the responses expected to demonstrate? So let me, what's easier is if I move down a little bit and, um, where it talks about what students uh, did and did not do. So, you know, the devil is in the details and those details are in the prompt. Um, weaker responses, you'll see right here, weaker responses struggled um, with the passage as an introduction. This was not a whole speech. It was just the opening to the speech and therefore struggled equally with the task. They treated the passage as an independent speech and sometimes made no mention of it as Luce's means of preparing the audience. Instead of choosing to discuss the passage as Luce's message, these essays typically did not reach the adequate level because they just didn't include the context of the passage as an introduction. So it was a kind of a misread. You can see that where they would totally miss the sophistication mark on today's um, uh, standard and you know would probably lose at least one or two other points. However, stronger responses were able to embed their discussion of the passage as Luce's introduction within their analysis of strategies and were much more successful because they understood the rhetorical situation and they understood more or gave more thought to the exigence why she was speaking, what's, the, what's going on. But if you don't read that prompt well, you don't get it. Uh, weaker responses also saw, this is on this box, um, choices as mere devices. Here it is again. Here I see metaphor and here I see um, semicolon and here I see simile and here I see imagery, like just as devices listing categories of rhetorical figures or tropes as some kind of magical tools. While discussion of figures and tropes could help the student writer explain how Luce worked to prepare her audience for her message, the student writer's mere identification of them, of figures and tropes, without a discussion of how the choice uh, to use them worked in Luce's particular rhetorical situation created inadequate essays. We know that from our SAT essay as well. It's not enough to identify a strategy um, without connecting it to how it impacts the reader or the audience. On the other hand, over here, stronger responses took advantage of the abundant opportunities to analyze. Let me see if I can highlight. Oh, it's not highlighting. Stronger responses took advantage of the abundant opportunities to analyze how Luce uses the introduction to her speech 
to prepare the audience for a message. More adept students recognized and discussed Luce's sense of her place in the rhetorical situation, along with her use of humor, while other students focused on more conventional rhetorical tropes, such as anaphora and illusion. Many students discussed the syntactical and tonal choices, to shifts of tone, and her, the, her short sentences, her one-liners, her longer sentences. Many students were able to provide effective and fluent discussions of these choices because the students focused much more on how the choices created a particular effect rather than on what they were. We also saw the classical rhetorical appeals of, used often to varying degree of success to explain Luce's introduction in the context of the speech that was to follow. So this wasn't that many years ago, and you can see from 2009 to 2007, the AP readers are still saying, yeah, yeah, we don't care if you can tell me that that's an illusion. What we care about is that you can describe her choice and how it impacts the reader, how it conveys the message, and how it influences us. That's what a rhetorical analysis is all about. What advice would you, um, based on your experience at the AP reading with student responses, what advice would you offer to teachers to help them improve in the student performance? Teachers should focus on students' ability to read rhetorically. Teachers should help students grapple on a broader level, helping students understand how the reader's, writer's choices address this rhetorical situation. Although the knowledge of specific features of language are an important part of this reading and thinking, teachers should emphasize that students' analyses of passages should occur with the rhetorical context of the passage in mind. Rhetorical context, rhetorical situation over and over and over. I hope you're hearing me. If you're watching this, I hope to see that phrase in your essay on Thursday. Rhetorical situation, exigence. Teachers should also recognize that knowledge of specific features alone is insufficient for understanding rhetorical analysis. Focusing solely or predominantly on devices or the strategy of style deprives students of understanding the broader context of rhetorical choices. A rhetorical analysis also considers the ways a writer organizes information and what kinds of support a writer uses to achieve his or her purpose. For example, considering the audience's relationship to this support of writer's claims. Teaching this kind of reading and thinking will help students avoid the tendency to reach definite and often and too often incorrect conclusions about what a text does and is doing to an audience and instead focus on the intended purpose of the text. Teachers should continue to move students away from the what and toward the how and why. Carefully crafted language is able to accomplish any given task. Teachers should encourage students to work to understand writers' purposes as well as the students, or excuse me, as well as the audience's attitude toward the purpose, toward the writer. What would the audience's attitude toward her be? Well, she's a colleague. What would her, their attitude toward her, what she says, be? You'll have to think about that. Imagine, and feel free to write about, you know, one can imagine. Now you're in a sophisticated um, gray zone, okay, as opposed to a this is the way it is, which, you know, you weren't there. Encouraging such understandings will help students adapt to different texts and be able to see how a writer, author, speaker attempts to move an audience. I like that phrase, move an audience. Write that down. Instead of saying impact, impact, or effect, effect, somehow put in that phrase, moves the reader, moves the audience. I like it. Additionally, teachers should also encourage students to understand that analysis is not a piecemeal identification of elements within a text. An, an analysis requires a holistic perspective of the text, describing how the various elements of a text work with each other to persuade an audience in a particular context. That's where you can kind of see that line of reasoning in the new rubric and the sophistication in the new rubric. That um, they really, it's not just about, here's paragraph one, I'm going to talk about diction. Here's paragraph two, I'm going to talk about detail. Here's paragraph three, I'm going to talk about syntax. But that they are moving in line together. Now, having said that, I made you sit on the elements of voice, diction, detail, imagery, syntax, and tone, all the way through two novels for a reason. Those words are powerful, they carry a lot of weight, and they're also broad enough that you could talk about diction and then have many examples 
um, as you also drop other words like metaphor or even imagery. Now, if you have a passage with significant imagery, commit to it, talk about it because imagery is, we live through our senses. So it connects very deeply and personally to a reader or an audience as we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and feel another person's experience, even another animal's experience, like the elephants from the SAT. Um, but don't forget those, those words, diction, detail, imagery, syntax, tone. Those are the elements of an author's voice. Those are the tools. And with those tools, the author, author shifts the tone, the author creates appeals that are appeals of ethos, appeals of pathos, appeals of logos. Um, the author questions the audience, the author gets the audience laughing, the audience uh, satirizes or lampoons, um, you know, whatever is going on. Um, and in the end, one of the powers of satire is that it gets the audience or the reader laughing. And once we're laughing, we don't feel like we're being criticized. We feel like someone else is being criticized. Um, but for all the things in To Kill a Mockingbird where we're laughing at that silly teacher, I, I gotta be, tell you, I've been there. I've been that silly teacher. Um, we're laughing at um, the missionary group and how they're helping some group over in Africa when they're missing the problems right in front of their face. You know, honestly, I feel like I've been there too. Uh, Nell Harper Lee exposes hypocrisy, as does most satire. And we find ourselves laughing at someone else. Um, and then over time, we, we subtly look at ourselves and we realize, well, if we're going to laugh at them, I don't want to do that in my own life. If I'm going to laugh at them for being so stupid, I need to make sure that I make change in my own life. Um, so I think that that is about it. I think that you should... Um, now that I've talked about that, if you're watching this all the way to the end, I think that you should open up that 2017 prompt. And I'm just gonna read the prompt or the, the opening one more time. And then you should definitely read those you know, 60 lines. It's pretty easy. And think about, um, well, you have to do this anyway. Think about a thesis, what would you use? The passage below is the opening to a speech made in 1960 by American journalist and politician, Claire Booth Luce. So a woman, a female journalist and politician in 1960. Get your context there, right? She's, she's kind of a, in the forefront of civil rights. Um, and she speaks to journalists at the Women's National Press Club. In this speech, Luce went on to criticize the tendency of the American press to sa sacrifice journalistic integrity in favor of perceived public demand for sensational stories. So sacrificing your integrity as a journalist because that's what people want to read. Um, kind of a pretty timely uh, comment right now, I think. Read the passage carefully, <clears throat> then analyze how Luce uses this introduction to prepare the audience for her message. That was the big sentence. And if students rushed over that sentence, they did not do well on this essay. Support your analysis of her rhetoric with specific references. You know how to do rhetorical analysis, but when it comes to satire, if you miss the cues in the prompt that tell you it's satire, you're, I don't know, you're not gonna get it. If you do see those cues, this criticize, words like criticize or satirize or make fun of, ridicule, big letters on the top of the paper, right? Satire. And it's gonna help click in your uh, learning from To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, I hope this helps. I hope some of you watch it.